Hello everyone. Hope uh, all of you are doing well. So welcome to Vayu Shastra Aerospace Future Scientist Meet Chapter Number Thirty Two. So Chennai is uh, it's a rainy day today. Full day. Some kind of uh, red or uh, orange alert. <laughs> so it's been uh, the whole day is rainy, but still. We did not stop, so we are doing our thirty second chapter, and today we have uh, two group of uh, researchers. One is our kuti kuti researcher, the young research group. The other one is the senior researchers. So what is this all about? So those who are watching it for the first time, let me introduce who we are, what we do, what is this future scientist meet, what is this. Uh, uh, why we are doing all these things so bio shastra is an edtech startup under iit madras it's incubated under iit madras and rtbi and uh, we received grant for uh, doing this services so what we do so for example if a child is uh, interested in dance music or anything they have specific set of phases to enhance their skill sets if a child is interested in aeronautics rockets space So where will you go and enhance your skill set in a systematic way? So we created a curriculum from age five to twenty two. So this is one. The second one is we have R and D team at younger level and also at college level, and also we do lot term, lots and lots of research. Uh, so part of this, we started something called Future Scientist Me a uh, few months back. Before that, we used to do as a practice for all the children, where we used to regularly meet on Saturdays and Sundays, discuss, do presentations, do a lot of research works, study research works. But then slowly it started picking up, to gaining a lot of more attention. Uh, we started going live. Then it start the students started responding well, and we started seeing a lot of more positive results. Like uh, we have a lot of C was here, a lot of C D was here, all are. From grade uh, two to grade nine, and we have a lot of uh, few registered companies here. Um, few children started writing their own articles, own books. So these kind of uh, uh, beautiful things started to happen. Now, part of this, I was thinking. Then we started signing MOUs with a lot of colleges related to our R and D projects. Then I was thinking, why don't we start something for college students as well? So we named it as Futurist Meet. We had to launch it officially. We'll be launching that also very soon. That's up out and out only for uh, senior batch of students. Part of this, we started uh, introducing some of our uh, college level researchers, research interns to do some presentations uh, for the students and for some advanced le advanced level topics uh, related uh, presentations. And today we have a guest as well. So we have uh, Jairaman sir, who is a. Uh, 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 principal project, uh, former principal project officer in CCID. Uh, then uh, he worked uh, in uh, Turkey as a uh, research uh, professor in Ankara University, and uh, he is our director of research. So welcome, sir. Welcome to Vice Chancellor Future Scientist Meet, Chapter Number Thirty Two. We have a lot of cutie uh, cutie researchers here who uh, okay. studied from grade two to grade nine. And they also have their own companies. Uh, so we have a few CEOs, lot of CEOs here, and we have our college uh, presenters, uh, uh, Pranay, Shrutaja, Yochana, to do presentations uh, on some yeah. advanced level topics. And also we have one uh, uh, two two uh, uh, presentations by our uh, mini researchers. <laughs> so okay. One, uh, uh, one is actually uh, one presentation by. Someone called Vishnu. He's a grade eight student. Mm -hmm. He created his own theories. He almost created forty theories. Uh, he comes up with his own uh, perspective how the universe works. This kind of uh, thing. And okay. uh, there's a grade two student who is going to give one short, small presentation about aerodynamics. Okay, let's not wait. Let's go inside our presentation. So we are going to start off with our uh, Vishnu. So let me pin our guest. Uh, let me pin uh, the first presenter as well. 
that's our vishnu so let me introduce uh, vishnu so vishnu is a grade 8 student from sri vagishta vidyashram sri rangam trichi and mm-hmm. Uh, whoever following uh, vai shastra future scientists me definitely know vishnu <laughs> he is popular for uh, coming up with all this controversy uh, theories and concepts uh, okay. vishnu so the stage is all yours you can start presenting sir can you hear me clearly <laughs> yes yes we can hear you and we yes. have a guest as well we have jaraman sir good evening sir okay start So I am B. Vishnu Chitran, studying eighth standard in Vagi Sir Kesram, Trichy. So I am class eight. So I am going to present my forty second theory, which is B uh, blue planet theory. Okay, one minute. So anyone having any idea about uh, colonizing Venus? colonizing venus uh, students you can reply in chat box also you can unmute yourself and answer the questions so um, yeah we do yes tj raised this hand yes tj you can unmute yourself yes so, so one way is that um you place a lot of mirrors in front of uh, venus like the front part of venus where the sun comes so um you can't make a full mirror you need to place a lot of um circular mirrors so that's when um the like you know the gravity of the sun um does not fully um attract the object so if you keep a full or a full mirror like a total piece of it so if you the sun's gravitational pull will attract it, attract it and then eventually it will um you know melt or it will crash at the sun or any other planet like mercury so okay. you need to place many mirrors at the front of the moon and two mirrors back of the moon so that the pressure just gets um you know separated reflected and then uh-huh. the um we the planet just cools down so after that you uh, you need to place a huge led um like you know circle which is, which will be the sun and then a bit smaller one which will be the moon so that it will look like uh, how it is on earth like the sun and moon rotating the earth nice Yes. So that's how it works. Nice, nice figure. Vishnu, I have a uh, small question. So, what about the temperature? What about the atmosphere in Venus? That's why uh, I am going to create all the doubts about all our planets. Because our body and biological system of human beings are uh, uh, are yeah, adapted to some uh, sort of ranges, so you cannot. Uh, even in earth also yeah, let's say you are in your room okay you are in room you have uh, air so air it's uh, like uh, 21 percentage of oxygen and uh, yeah 78 percentage of nitrogen and remaining 1 percentage of other gases like co2 or even some other gases okay and uh, in your room uh, if uh, carbon monoxide is like uh, 10 or uh, i think 100 ppm what will happen what will happen Here, you will uh, no no you will fall unconscious okay yeah. so, so our body cannot uh, stand that much so then uh, first thing is like uh, uh, even in moon also we cannot uh, uh, like uh, we cannot go without oxygen yeah oxygen okay, is there is all, uh, but any also your uh, uh, concept is like uh, venus uh, colonization is uh, good one so then uh, before that we have to see the uh, radiation what is the radiation and the, what the uh, sun radiation what is the temperature and what is the surrounding gases at least atmospheric gases 
near the earth sir near the venus surface forget about like higher altitude or something like that from the venus uh, surface it's near the surf uh, the surface of the venus what is the uh, gases these things you have to see apart from as uh, strijit has mentioned like uh, we can put some uh, types of mirrors to have uh, yeah to have light for the yeah these things yeah okay sir yes. yeah that is also we can see that okay Like, hey, Vishnu, be... I want. I'm curious about what your theory is about. So he always okay. comes up with this out of box uh, concept. Yes, start. Okay, so coming uh, Venus is the second planet in our solar system. It is the hottest, hottest planet. So because it's full of carbon dioxide, even the clouds they are making is sulfur dioxide. So. Temperature in Venus is four hundred and twenty degrees Celsius. So how to change it as a new? So we need to plant some plants named as uh, one minute. We need to plant some plants named as Sempervivum, Arachnidium, and Common Houseweed. So these these two plants will absorb. Up to sixty-one to sixty-five percent of heat or uh, temperature, it will absorb it and it can stand up to this. So, if we plant these two all over here, so it will absorb the heat and the uh, the precipitation process. Sorry, uh, ah, yeah, the precipitation process is also uh, common like all the plants. So, it's. Uh, Like this, so the heat will get reduced by trees. So we know that uh, car, it will all the leaves will uh, absorb carbon dioxide and it will leave oxygen. So it will also takes carbon dioxide in and leaves oxygen out. So we need to produce uh, some amount of nitrogen for gravity. I am mentioning that. Gravity is sorry. Nitrogen is needed for gravity. So the main source of gravity is nitrogen. So now Venus became like the Venus. There are don't get confused. That's his his own. He created his own world of theories. That nitrogen is one. Essence. Nitrogen. Uh, no, no. Gravity is different from the atmospheric gases. No, how you can see that uh, nitrogen could. Uh, Uh, change the gravity. Gravity is because of the attraction forces between the planets. Okay. Yes, sir. But uh, all the planets are rich in hydrogen, helium, methane. But uh, only Earth is rich in oxygen, nitrogen, and all the gases. So nitrogen is a uh, maximum in here. So nitrogen is needed for gravity. Okay, go ahead. Any other doubts? I am having one doubt. So we, so Venus has a poisonous toxic name as a. Hey, I forgot to tell one points. Uh, the plants which are we are planting, plants uh, sulfur dioxide is uh, essential. So uh, sulfur dioxide are needed for. Fertilizer. They can be made as fertilizers. So they, if uh, sulfuric, uh, sorry, sulfur dioxide, if it fall on, uh, uh, if it causes like a uh, rainfall in the plants, it's essential for the no harm in plants. Uh, I have a question. Yes, yes, Sanjay. How are you gonna prevent the uh, plants from getting into acid rain? Or... Hey. That's now I have said now. See here, the clouds are filled with sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, they are made up for sorry, they are made for fertilizers for plants. So they are essential for those plants and not essential. So plant, we so can no harmful. That's it. Okay, so above uh, sixty kilometer from the ground, uh, from the surface of Venus. It's kind of earth like, uh, but uh, do the plants exist? So we can use no, that no, no, no. to uh, have some plants at seventy kilometer from the ground. Ah, that is invariable actually. Uh, 
so you so can use all... that idea to keep some plants there but from there how you take it uh, that uh, vishnu you need to explain yeah. so 70 km ground land 70 km mele vandu earth earth madri or condition irukum venus la so you can keep all the plants at 70 km using uh, all this uh, floating balloons or uh, airships kind of uh, set up from there adu ange end how will you take it say nee solra plants ellathe we can or 70 km la vachidom after that sir not even that 70 km at all in that surface uh, Uh, so in the surface the pressure vandu romba jaasti a irukum temperature also very high so uh, plants vandu erinjidum la that's what sir 475 degrees celsius are there in uh, venus yes. so these uh, those two plants what are they that uh, sempervirum arachnoidium and uh, common housley they will absorb 61 to 65% of heat in them okay so if we plant there means they will absorb those heat so it will become chill so okay. in that uh, it's land so we can plant anything and we can do anything okay so the question is will they withstand this much uh, high temperature yeah mm-hmm. yeah they can sorry for the interruption uh, for the fact uh, that to you should you should be planting trees over there it has to certain the minimal temperature or the minimal pressure that is already pre existing in the, on that surface so without uh, actually implementing that you cannot actually plant any anything there you cannot actually at least survive there uh, irrespective of whatever what are you like whatever you are planting on it you cannot survive there actually so like on the upper hand like uh, the altitude ranges from uh, 75 km to 80 km where uh, it is it is a uh, kind of an earthly atmosphere which is uh, like which you can see there but it's not like uh, the humidity and the amiss temperatures that will uh, range uh, like that uh, that are circulated over there are uh, validated with respect to your uh, proceedings so it's not likely to happen actually this no idea is good ana ni vandu kilometer kilometer adha korakka mudiyum i think enoda from my perspective from 70 to 65 slowly you reduce slow, like you, you need to plant that many plants to absorb the i don't know i'm just because it's like out of box anyway uh, like for for the growth of any plant it's not that uh, the surface is only important there are many other factors which are responsible uh, to the growth of any like whatever you consider it any plant there are many other factors which uh, do imply on it so it's not like uh, you, we plant in the the uh, plant and it recurs with the atmosphere and takes out the all temperature and everything it it also depends upon certain factors like uh, what is the soil uh, implication on the plant what is the uh, availability of nutrients on the surface what is the availability of uh, uh, the what is it like uh, the exact pressure which is abided on the surface so it all depends upon it so venus soil is full of black soil so black sorry. soil like black soil is not exactly that we find in our planet see the color varies but uh, not the properties every soil has their own uh, peculiar properties to withstand they have their own ingredients in the soil if you path the plant but the idea is uh, good so using plants to reduce temperature but how we will implement that we need to do a lot of more research yeah nice 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 okay actually yeah just sorry for the interruption in my opinion all the planets having almost the same uh, this uh, what the composition i think so check this i think what is the, because as uh, uh, as how the planets are evolved from this yes. uh, theory you know na yes, it's sir. like uh, uh, sun has exploded and uh, after explosion of the sun and uh, uh, sun uh, it's uh, small small uh, it's like uh, uh, compared to sun these are all small particles like yes. uh, earth or venus or whatever it may be moon or whatever it may be so whatever uh, i have observed in the uh, this thing uh, the <clears throat> during that explosion of the sun uh, what is happening is like uh, uh, it's uh, do, let's say if you explode something uh, some gases could around uh, uh, could uh, uh, form a surrounding atmosphere yeah. okay so that uh, so that will uh, that that may be changing so because of that uh, gases and the location of the position of the 
planets, this temperature and the gases forming around the atmosphere could be different. Whereas uh, the minerals, uh, like uh, if you see Earth uh, surface minerals, yeah. and if you see the moon, so so far we have uh, confident about the Earth and moon. Okay, so what is uh, the mineral composition? So mostly it is like after explosion, everything is getting combusted, fire. After it, it is like uh, after that because in uh, Earth also we can see in the um, Earth surface uh, we have mostly silicon dioxide and aluminium oxide a little bit. Okay, it is a burnt material. Same thing, but even uh, in Earth also you see in the Earth core inside the Earth core what is the temperature? Vishnu, do you know that? It increases. How much it is? It's around 3000 or 4000 degrees uh, Celsius and inside right. the Earth core. As what uh, you uh, so 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 It's inside the Earth core. Uh, we have, uh, you can see that uh, if you go to that uh, Wikipedia or Google or whatever it may be, you can see the Earth layer temperature. Only outer surface, we have the cool atmosphere. Okay, the temperature is very, very low. Whereas if you go inside the Earth, Earth itself, Earth core, it is around some 300 to 400 degrees centigrade in each and every layer, it is it varies. Okay, the same thing, if you go other, if you see other planets also, it may not be big difference. Okay, so there could be some, uh, it's all, all uh, everything is a born out material. Okay, so then, uh, so plant is uh, plant. They can uh, we can crop it or not? I don't know because even uh, our body or uh, whatever living organisms are uh, uh, taking so much mutations like corona. Okay, <laughs> after that uh, we are uh, yeah we are evolving uh, some sort of uh, yeah this thing. Okay. So, uh, yes, anyhow, so change it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyhow, you find out some of the solutions for the uh, planting uh, some the uh, cropping planet plant some in this uh, Venus yeah. plan, planet. Okay. Anyhow, so let's uh, see. Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Continue, Vishnu, continue with your. Uh, you have two theories, right? So this yeah. is uh, using plants to uh, reduce the temperature of uh, Venus. Okay. Next one. One minute. No, I just have an opinion for you. You can ah. so for the theory of um planting the plants on lunar surface so you can just do some gene editing yeah we can okay my theory number 43 is mystery theory so all know that uh, temples uh, sculptures are uh, made up of different mechanisms, different technologies. So, which is related to now the modern technology or even more than that. So, what is the idea about why we, how the temple sculptures and the modern technology are getting linked or uh, it's going more than a Modern technology. How? So you are telling the uh, technology used in temples, which seems to be much more modern than whatever we have currently. We are asking yeah. how. Okay. Ah, uh, guys. So, audience, you can uh, put your answer in the chat box or raise your hands so you can unmute. So, how the like the the ancient technology looks much more. Advanced than the current technology. Even the pyramids are pizza. No. Pyramids, pyramids. Pyramids, pyramids. Yes, yes. Yeah. Not only pyramids, there are a lot of examples for. Them. Yes, Krishna, continue, continue. 
நேச்சுரலி they can have any mechanism so he is driving differently with the cycle so see here here is an astronaut wearing a space suit sitting in something and uh, we don't know what what is that so here is one which is uh, i think it's a nuclear weapon i think so at the ancient times so these two are the one we are using right now but these two are mystery right now so how uh, one image i know that's from uh, i think panchavarna swami temple it's near trichy the second i, image. Can see, uh, I want to uh, yeah, something like a uh, uh, cycle picture right uh, in uh, as i seen uh, before pandemic one i uh, news i was seen that uh, in one temple there were like this one the it is this picture was been that this uh, this is in inside one temple they said like is that is very old temple uh, they and they having like this inside the temple that i was seen i was seen a news like that so the, the temple is more than i think 800 to 1000 years old but the modern cycle is only invented at the like uh, 1800s 1850s time so that's one of the mystery or questions in lot of people mind yes vishnu continue okay then uh, who are all uh, who are all uh, believing in continental drift theory so the world is full of pangea before so i got ah uh, okay then <laughs> you know the reason to you know the reason to yeah So please raise your hand. Who raise believe? Your hands. So who are believe in this Pangea Ultima theory? Like the whole, all the continents were was like as a single piece before. Now they got splitted and drifted away. Jagun, hi there. You are outing in a under two half space when you go with a party. Okay. Yes, I think most of them believe Vishnu. Yeah. Okay then. Uh... all know about uh, dinosaurs no yeah there are some things they got extinct yeah i can tell you so first of all near canada so in alberta like actually alberta is in canada i know that uh, 65 million years ago there was a meteor impact so that's the time of the cretaceous the end of the cretaceous during the mastocene period so then that created a series of natural disasters uh, ranging from volcanic eruptions to floods to earthquakes to poisonous gases and all of these related also in the in to the continental drift because of the tectonic plates which become a lot weaker du- uh, during the cretaceous period is it okay okay thanks so i do believe in these theories i do believe in these but yeah. how they become how people got down and again we are uh, raising up now so we know that all the uh, people are in a pangea before continents are formed Eurasia here, Africa, like this. So India here, and that is Australia. Yeah, so, yeah, and we also have two, just two oceans. One is the Pacific, and the other the Tethys. Okay. Yeah. So, and so, we have like five. Ah, so we know that before continental, the continents were merged and it was a Pangaea. In that time, dinosaur and other creatures. creatures means uh, yardy the the one uh, which is a hybrid like uh, 
animal which is a uh, mixture of a uh, uh, elephant lion and something else an elephant an eagle and a lion it's yai so it's one time breakfast itself a full uh, elephant so it's just the biggest and a huge it's a huge animal so because of an asteroid or meteor hit they all uh, became extinct so in the last the previous uh, slide uh, i have said that and scientist to so the uh, the one who have crowd uh, sorry carved the sculptures must be an intelligent so i have given as a scientist so uh, because of an meteor hit they all become extinct and some became a, and some scientist also got extinct so but some of them were alive so they are alive so yeah, in that uh, you are talking something like this saptarishis the matsya avatar uh, saves seven uh, people wait 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 i'm not able to understand anything so uh, what do you mean you say there were people at uh, that time people at that what time what does he say but he didn't find their bones or body see first of all one one thing the uh, sorry to say this but humans and dinosaurs there was a gap of 53 million years humans uh, uh started to form you know the modern humans no not the modern humans the uh, first of all homo habilis uh, they entered the world only 2 million years ago but all the dinosaurs have died out nearly 65 million years ago we have nearly 60 million years of gap so how can you say that people were allowed alive at that time that's what i do not clarify this is right <laughs> okay one sec okay that's the theory is all about okay yeah. so but some of them were alive so uh, the the scientists are intelligent who carved the sculptures of the temples must be an intelligent so all of them were just an scientist but because of this media hit all became extinct but some of the people were alive so they got phobia so that was the first time which is a, a huge disaster got hit tamara Sanjay, please wait a minute. Wait, I'll let them complete. So they got phobia, which is uh, just like Hitler. He got uh, he is just a messenger in Germany. To he was just sending a message to the opponent. In that time, the uh, uh, bomb, the opponent team uh, put the bomb uh, near him, but it didn't uh, hit Hitler. So he got. Uh, uh, so on the mic on the hitler the mic on the he got uh, he deceived so yeah he was just an army messenger so before so um, all got uh, all done the uh, treatment to hitler so a doctor who uh, uh, consulted hitler said that there is no damage for hitler but just because of his fearness uh, in the time hitler can't open his eyes because of that uh, bomb which have blasted near him so because of the fear he didn't he can't open his eyes so the doctor so like that only uh, leave about that hitler history so but because of the phobia all the humans got uh, afraid and uh, they even got yeah okay so so they got the uh, phobia and they forgot everything and started a new life a uh, new culture so they build up and build up and build up so we came here so we came like this so okay. i just see i got this so let me so there were humans like super human something so there was on meteor hit because of that hit there some kind of phobia or bayam andirchi maybe fear of maybe that can be a 
fire that can you know the phobia and the almost lost most of the technologies or we forgot or something happened so it took certain million years or certain thousand years for us to again yeah we'll bring back all this technology this is it right yeah ஒன்ஸ்டபிள்ளியன் இயர்ஸ் that's why we are still alive in the cenozoic but i'm not sure wha- how are you saying that the humans uh, the you know uh, a very well developed race of humans it would yeah. i'm sure it would have uh, taken at least a million years for them to develop or even so, a thousand years we have one uh, film director also here so he also uh, like he likes your theory and he also says he has idea how yeah to go yeah to go that's uh, like strenuous ganesh uh, yeah i'm very close friend of mine he has oh. of few movies he is going to direct one so for so, so. superb okay, okay. So finish finish it fast finish okay. it okay hey, i have doubt to hey, wait for na 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 or 4 km questions vechirken da irra so uh, i'm sure there has been no meteor hit for the past 20 million years so how come you say well developed race and of humans there are many meteor hits not asteroid day யாருமே <laughs> <laughs> first first were the monkeys who were called as homo habilis so ah yes, uh, uh, first man could all monkey da adu satyam adu monkey da theriyunda app app epra na avan solra man na adha enakume puriyala da satyama solra dinosaur bodu super humans vaandanga ra adha enak edhuvume puriyala dinosaur bodu the yari i can uh, i can uh, agree with this yari story but i cannot uh, Uh, I cannot take this. So, even when Newton came up with his new theory, everyone said no. When yeah. Newton came up with his theory, people opposed him. So don't worry. Yeah, go. Hey, 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 Finish. so i'm saying that all of them are people all of them are human only people so they made these sculptures they became <laughs> modern <laughs> yeah 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 so far hey living in sultan era yeah na keka matin so so finish it i pan mute panna mudiyad yaro so ne complete pan so so nomadic culture lend Chinese. So, because of this phobia, they got forgot all of these things. But some of them remembered. But because of the fear, they died. So, like that, that thanatophobia, which means the fear of death. So, they have forgot everything. I am saying that no monkeys evolved in this. Maybe the maybe they can come from. but we before it take a long period of time okay so the one who lived in that period are also humans so before them only ancient it is monkeys they were so they began like this so this astronaut we know that this uh, this one we have found the cycle that this one we need to achieve all these things so doubt scared doubts kadaya dipo ena we have a lot of presentation following up 
விஷ்ணு <laughs> <laughs> so there are two theories presented by vishnu today one is the uh, how to uh, cool down venus we came up with an idea of uh, uh, sending uh, taking some plants there the second theory is the evolution of humans or how humans lost their technology how it's evolved so these are two uh, theories uh, which was presented by vishnu both are like very interesting and both can be uh, defended in, in their own perspective okay there's nothing like wrong and all that can be true we don't know exactly because current uh, solutions provide different answers but again that can be if more research can be done on this that can be proved maybe vishnu also may be right we don't know so well done vishnu so well done thank you so much for presenting two theories and uh, so uh, sina you want to say something now or on the last okay so at the last we can have uh, uh, feedback from our creative uh, director script writer and uh, yeah uh, so jeram sir can we move to our next presentation yeah yes uh, jagdish okay. can go so next that's our first then, presenter that's yeah, our so they, uh, vishnu are, okay so he usually comes up with all these crazy theories uh but which also makes some kind of uh, sense uh, okay okay yeah. not much explore okay. thank you vishnu okay let's give a huge round of applause for vishnu for uh, coming up with this two theories all of you unmute yourself let you on applause for vishnu ready 1 2 3 yeah nice thank you thank you thank you so much so vishnu you will have a separate question and uh, interactive session with all the audience in the last okay now let me welcome our next presenter so he is one of the youngest presenter here and he is doing air science program in vayu shastra trigger the spark student he is a great great two student from little rock indian school brahmavara udupi karnataka good vishnu and that's good, good, good. kalkura for you good presentation so vishnu you have a separate question and vibhav uh, you can share your screen you can start your presentation you can unmute yourself Okay. Yeah. Can you be Can you be a bit louder? Okay. Hi, my name is Vibhav. I'm in second grade, Little Rock Indian School, Udupi, from Karnataka. Today, I'm going to take a short short session on aerodynamics. The contents are as follows. What is aerodynamics? Aerodynamics is everywhere. What is aerodynamic shape? Examples for the aerodynamics: Magnus effect, types of aerodynamics, in that sports aerodynamics, automobile aerodynamics, and fashion aerodynamics. How how an aeroplane moves, and then we are going to summarize the topic. Aerodynamics is everywhere, including science, nature, space, and air. what is aerodynamics the word aerodynamics is derived from aero air and dynamic meaning moving it is the way air moving around the things the study of movement of matter in relation with air or gases is called aerodynamics aerodynamics is also the third phase it is called aerodynamic shape examples for the aerodynamics a rocket blasting of the launch pad a kite in the sky a moving car 
and a hot air bubble. What is aerodynamic shape? An aerodynamic shape or design allows an airplane, car, or etc., or any vehicle to move through the air in a smooth and fast way. The most aerodynamically efficient shape is the teardrop. Magnificent. If a ball is rolling on one side, it does not go straight and reach the goal. It, it will go in a curved pattern and reach, reach the goal. For example, if it is rolling left side, it will go the left side in a curved pattern and reach the field. How an aeroplane flies? Now I am going to tell the four forces which help move a plane through the air. The first force is lift, the force push, pushing up. Gravity, also called, gra also called weight, the force pushing down. Thrust is the force pushing forward and drag is the force pulling backward. If lift is stronger than gravity, the plane goes up. And if gravity is stronger than the lift, the plane goes down. What is sports aerodynamics? If we throw a ball, the ball creates a kind of whirlpool rotating in the air. With the help of this, it moves forward spinning and reaches the goal. What is automobile aerodynamics? The teardrop shape of a sports car cuts through the air and travels on road. If cars are aerodynamically designed, it saves fuel as it takes less energy to travel. Sports aerodynamics. As I discussed earlier, the aerodynamic shape is also in a sports ball and sports ball is related, is related to sports. So, that is what sports aerodynamics is. In that only, many examples left are there. Automobile aerodynamics. As we discussed earlier in the sports aerodynamics, the, the car also has an aerodynamic shape which helps it, which helps it move forward. The last which... The last which I have made is fashion aerodynamics. It is like all the other aerodynamics and a shoe has on its forward or an aerodynamic shape. Imagine if it would be it would be flat it would be flat here but but you will feel heavy if you do that because it does when you uh, move the shoe forward it does not create its own force to go forward but if it is curved but if it is curved like this car it creates energy to go back and create the force to to create the thrust and it makes its own force to go forward and now we are going to summarize the topic. Oh, movement of things in relation to air or gases is called aerodynamics. Aerodynamics is everywhere. There are different types of aerodynamics. Sports aerodynamics, automobile aerodynamics, and fashion aerodynamics. If the lift is stronger than gravity, the plane goes up. And if the gravity is stronger than lift, the plane goes down. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about my favorite topic. Super, super. Vibhav, sir. So this is grade 2 student, uh, Vibhav. So I'm just amazed. All these things I learned only in my uh, bachelor's second year, I guess. All these types of aerodynamics and all these things. Jaraman, sir, you have any comments for Vibhav? Yeah, so we are uh, good at this, uh, uh, Jagdish. So we are in narrow department. We are in narrow space field. So whatever the doubt you have, the same thing. So it is. Yeah, he is uh, quite good. So he wanted to learn something. So then uh, I can see future of uh, space industry. Maybe a future Elon Musk, future Abdul Kalam in the making. So he is a great two student. So you can learn lot of more things uh, with us. 
So yeah, yeah. aerodynamics, it is, I think, uh, you know, check this uh, low speed aerodynamics uh, research is almost saturated. Yes. Okay. So now we have to see uh, high speed aerodynamics like uh, supersonic or uh, hypersonic. Uh, uh, still a lot of gray areas to be addressed in that area. But anyhow, so uh, school children are always like fascinating this. Okay. Okay. So then, uh, yeah, we can go ahead next. Well done, Viba. Well done. So that's our that's his first presentation here on live. Thank uh, so you. Let's give a huge round of applause for Viba. That's a beautiful presentation by Grade Two Viba from which school? Let me check. He's a Little Rock uh, Indian School, Brahmavera, Utupi, Karnataka. Well done. Well done, Viba. So let's give you a huge round of applause for Viba. All of you go on mute. Okay. One, two, three. Yeah. Thank you. It's amazing, amazing, Vibhav. Amazing. You can drop your feedbacks in the chat chat box uh, for Vibhav. Okay, now let's come to our main segment of uh, chapter number thirty-two. So we have a bunch of uh, um, three uh, research crew members from senior category, from uh, senior team. Like uh, our college level research crew, this is, and we do research on lot of advanced level uh, uh, projects. One such topic is thermal protection systems, and we have a, a guest who is from exact uh, field, so from the field of uh, missiles. So Jaram has worked uh, in Agni all these projects. So it's the right uh, guest we have today. and uh, let me introduce the three presenters today so all three uh, students uh, are final year students uh, from aerospace uh, department btec aerospace uh, from srm uh, uh, institute of science and technology btec aerospace engineering and they are part of vai shastra research uh, intern team for past uh, almost uh, one year and uh, they have done their uh, uh, basic training in uh, rockets and the uh, drones and satellites and uh, uh, so that's uh, three presenters one is pranay mohan raju one is hrituja vinayak chipa the third one is malavarpu meri yochana uh, yes so the stage is all yours good evening sir and hi good evening sir good evening everyone good evening sir Oh, can I can you present it? You can share your screen. Okay, so today's topic is about user usage of natural fibers for thermal protection systems of hypersonic and reentry vehicles. Basically, reentry vehicles are hypersonic, and uh, you you guys know what reentry vehicles are, right? the ones which come back to the earth surface so um, i'll record this thing so it will be helpful for you okay um uh, even go to the next slide so when we talk about natural fibers you all know i think uh, okay let To, to give a brief introduction about natural fibers they are the fibers which are naturally available on the earth surface or and uh, natural fibers are classified into plant based animal based and mineral based there are three different uh, types of uh, natural fibers so now uh, the study of natural fibers has become very important in recent years because of its growing awareness for the need to protect environment resources and shrinkage of forest other than natural fibers there are synthetic fibers also which are man made fibers uh i can go to the next slide i think so why do we choose natural fibers over traditional fibers or synthetic fibers we use nat we choose natural fibers over uh, 
traditional or synthetic fibers because of its easy availability and low costs and because of other, it's biodegradable in nature. That's the main aspect. So, yeah. So in this meeting, we'll be discussing about uh, different natural fibers like sisal fibers, basalt fibers, kinaf and flex. Apart from this, we'll go with, after this we'll be going with material properties and then we'll go with casting techniques, which we use. And after that, we go with why we chose, based on this material, how we can give thermal coating techniques to, pro, to increase the thermal properties of the material. Okay. So this is the, nat so natural fiber composites is basically five. now today we'll be going on dealing with plant fibers and a mineral based fiber that is basalt fiber um, yeah you can go to the and these are some physical properties different physical properties of natural fibers and th this is the list of in the first column you have list of all the natural fibers and uh, their properties i think you'll be learning about all these once you come to higher grades so Based on these uh, based on these properties, we have chosen few uh, we have chosen few fibers and given ex detailed ex uh, explanation about it. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, the first fiber is basalt fiber. So, yeah. Uh, so. The origin of basalt fiber is from volcanic magma. And, uh, you know, volcanic magma is a hot fluid or semi-fluid material found under the earth's crust. These fluids are first solidified in open air. Now, basalt is a common term used for gray, dark in color volcanic rocks, which are taken from molten lava after solidification. You got I it? Basalt ro uh, rock. Basalt. Yeah, from the rock, we extract the fiber. Okay. So, uh, basalt have good physical and chemical properties, physical as in like uh, tensile strength and all. Like, they're strong. And they even have good thermal properties. It can go up to 2000 degrees Celsius, very high temperature. It can withstand high temperatures. So, that's about basalt and okay you can go to the next slide now for the production of basalt it's carried out in three stages first is melting of basalt fiber melting then it's homogenization that is removing from oxidizations and all and then it is extraction extraction of fiber materials from the rock and uh, after this, we use a uh, copper coating to enhance the properties of the basalt. Okay. Uh, okay, the next file, that's about little information about basalt fiber. The I next know, fiber is skinna fiber. Is anyone talking? Yeah, Harjit, do you have any questions? Uh, yes. Yeah, we can ask. Uh, yeah. uh, so you said that uh, basalt uh, fiber we have been take from bas basalt rock. How do you how do you will take? How do what? I didn't get the question. How do you take the basalt fiber from basalt rock? Okay, it's uh, industrially done. Okay, uh, there's that's a whole big process of for it. First, it's if the rock is rocks are melted, then we the cleaning of the raw the fibers, and then we extract the fibers from it. It's all a um, industrial well, process. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, carry on. Okay. The next uh, the next fiber is skinna fiber. Okay. Yeah. Hibiscus cannabis is also known as kina fiber and it's a and it's used for commercial purposes. So 
One minute. Yeah. This is a 4,000 year old crop and it's originally found in Africa. Then it is cultivated in other countries such as India, Bangladesh and all. And uh, basically kinav is primary, primarily grown for its fibers. Okay. Then now coming to the production, you can go to the next slide. Okay. Coming to the production of uh, kinav. First, there's, first, the fibers are produced by separating the core of kinaf. Basically, kinaf is a plant. Okay. So, from the core, the fibers are separated uh, and uh, separated. Then, these fibers are chemically treated for bacterial removal and retting. Okay. Retting is a process where uh, all that gummy substances is removed from the fibers. Then after that, uh, they are separated into single strands and woven in, make then mixed with cotton and then they were woven into yarns or bundles based on their usage. And now coming to the properties. So, uh, okay, they have good uh, density and elongation and breakage elongation and breakage is how how much it can with how much it can elongate like when stretched and all uh, next yeah next is flux fibers which will be explained by rutaja yeah hello everyone so i'll continue with the flux fibers uh, so the, these flux fibers are actually processed from its seeds uh, it, it's a plant plant fiber and uh, is processed from the seeds. It seeds. It's a uh, mostly used in uh, aerospace and automotive industries. Uh, these uh, fibers does not uh, maximum. It can go uh, the temperature that it withstand is mostly to uh, from two hundred to two hundred and thirty degrees Celsius, not more than that. And then uh, this must uh, this should be uh, stiffer due to cement that holds the fiber bundle together. Then there is the chemical composition of the flax uh, fibers, that is cellulose, hemicellulose, uh, lignin, uh, then uh, fat wax, ash, and water. So that is the composition of the flax fiber. And then the physical properties that are a length, color, tensile strength, uh, and elongation, the length the length varies it's up, upon our extraction the way how we extract the fiber the length depends on the extraction uh, but the average length that the that they specify is from 90 to 125 centimeters uh, then it's they ha, uh, it has different colors that is brownish ivory uh, gray light yellowish then the tensile strength the tensile strength varies from 6 uh, 6.5 to 8 gram per denier then the elongation elongation is uh, at break is approximately 1.8% dry and 2.2% wet so elongation at break is actually the when you stretch that fiber at the most uh, it will give you those results next then the specific gravity is 1.454 uh, effect of moisture is uh, 12% that is standard uh, value uh, the effect of heat, uh, it's uh, uh, highly resistant to decomposition up to 12 degrees Celsius. Uh, and uh, it begins to discolor after crossing the limits temperature. But its uh, conductance is good. Then uh, the resistance is moderate and uh, dimension stability, uh, it's good but creases easily. Next, then it's, uh, there comes the sizzle fiber. Uh, sizzle fiber has good uh, temperature, uh, which, uh, which withstands good temperature. Next slide. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, before on fiber, you said right. Uh, you said that it it is used in uh, uh, aerospace and uh, other in first automotive industry. Yeah. Uh, how they are used in aerospace? And, uh, uh, how they are used is. They are, these are actually fibers, right? So, so these fibers are uh, extracted with different ex uh, polymers or composites or laminates. And uh, they uh, first start to uh, compress it or uh, 
test all the uh, abilities of that fiber applications any applications application application is like mostly uh, for the coatings and all like yeah coatings and all the body of the structure it is used there body of, like you are making any uh, like if you are uh, designing a rocket or any vehicle it can be used on the body of that uh, object like that so but you have to study its properties very nicely so that it should withstand all the properties okay thanks bro <laughs> yeah so this is all fiber cisal fiber uh, its low density and uh, has a good st tensile strength uh, then it is uh, like is uh, good natural fiber and can be uh, most uh, new composites can be found out using this fiber uh, like uh, while we process it using the fibers uh, then uh, the, uh, there can be different methods used in this uh, micro analysis can be done there can be used uh, different polymer composites also for uh, different uh, uh, results that we need next then uh, the, these are the properties uh, of cisal fiber the density is one varies from 1.33 to 1.45 then there is tensile strength uh, that is 510 to 700 and uh, young's modulus is 9 to 38 elongation at break 2.2 to 2.9 uh, uh, cisal fibers are anti-static and does not attract or trap dust particles uh, and absorb moisture or water easily uh, it's a fine texture and uh, uh, the largest range of dyed colors of all it can, we can dye different colors with this fiber uh, and uh, uh, it leaves can its leaves can be treated with natural borax for fire resistance properties. So, uh, natural borax is uh, what you can treat it with its leaves, not the fiber, but the it leaves can be treated with natural borax. Next slide. Uh, so, these are the comparison of synthetic fiber and natural fiber that you see that the different density, renewability, cost, everything can be compared with natural fiber and synthetic fiber. And nowadays, we tend to use natural fibers uh, in, in the industry. We are apply, uh, use, trying to use and adapt to the natural fibers as well. Because when we compare them, we, we uh, comparatively get good results from, uh, of natural fibers. So, uh, yeah, let Pranay continue this. So this is Pranay and, and uh, I'm going to take over with the presentation. And uh, there are certainly uh, many types of casting techniques that could be utilized uh, while the preparation of uh, any natural fiber method or any metal laminates or metal fibers. But uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, we need to have a very simple method or, or at least a method which could be used to in, in, in uh, like in terms of any ages. So we have chosen two casting techniques. One is Swiss casting technique and the other is hand layup method. Uh, coming to the hand layup method, it is uh, it is kind of, it is like you are layer up, laying up all the metal, uh, like all the material sheets or the material fiber layers uh, in compensation, like when you add with the resins and everything, uh, you'll be doing with your own hands and then later compressing it. And uh, for Swiss casting technique, you'll have a hollow, uh, like you'll, make a socket and uh, you'll uh, use a sweet squeeze uh, cast to make it uh, like good uh, kind of a compressive shape and uh, there are certain casting techniques and uh, like for the thermal protection system we usually need a thermal protection system when, when we consider a object running in space uh, like as the temperature or the speed or the velocities uh, increase with respect to the temperature that we move in, uh, we need to have a certain layer uh, uh, on top of the uh, like a vehicle or a shuttle or a reentry vehicle to protect that from the external abrasive properties or the external uh, temperatures and everything. And this is for that reason we will be using thermal protection system. Uh, these are the basic prim uh, primitive thermal protection systems like uh, where the lower layer is is having any aluminium composite and the uh, the middle layer is filled with any uh, aerogel uh, which which could be uh, car carbon form silica or uh, like whatsoever 
and the upper layer is uh, usually a polymer uh, enriched uh, layer which in in fact have the higher uh, strength or the uh, ability to withstand more temperatures and uh, the, this is the other thing where uh, like we have certain we usually take uh, the layers with respect to our own dimensions and we'll uh, study on them and we'll have the testings so that we'll get the exact results as we need and uh, there are uh, while choosing the uh, layers we definitely want to look with uh, definitely have to look with uh, certain aspects so that's uh, if we use certain objects there shouldn't be any possibility of of the depletion of the atmospheric layers and everything such as if we if we are using chromium uh, diffusing agents uh, certainly there are a few non benefactory factors to the environment which are not biodegradable in that aspect we have to choose uh, materials very carefully so that uh, even while we use it uh, there should not be any problem with respect to the atmosphere or the ecological balance so these are certain uh, coatings chromate conversion coatings have a good atmospheric uh, erosion resistance uh, when we go uh, to the top layers of atmosphere we the vehicle certainly has uh, like vehicle deals with certain types of corrosions like hot corrosion uh, one two three with respect to the uh, rising temperatures and uh, to withstand the withstand those temperatures we use these coatings and uh, the primary coating is a preparatory coating on the metal surface prior to the top coating to ensure better adhesion higher durability and additional protection against corrosion corrosion is is one of the main factor and the oxidation is also one of the main factors while uh, we choose materials so to withstand those certain properties we have taken materials under consideration and uh, nano composites nano composites uh, like in in the past few decades uh, the nano composites have shown a better uh, point of results rather than comparing with the other uh, sort of uh, uh what do you say other sorts of composites nano composites have a deep rooted behavior and their performance is up to the benchmark standards and uh, since uh, the layers are like since the fibers are very nano and uh, they can adapt to any situation or any uh, formidable layer that we choose up to so nano composites have been uh, one of uh, one of the revelations of uh, these the past two decades so if if we are to choose any uh, any thermal protection system i personally preferred sol gel structure and uh, un, uh, like the normal nano thermal barrier coating for the sol gel structure we will definitely choose a nano composite or a nano alloy substrate as the base layer which could be any composite of aluminum or any higher standard materials taking silica aerogel uh, as a, like we certainly want to use silica aerogel as as it has a, a miniature nano pores with 10 to 15 nanometer resistance which definitely takes out like takes in all the heat and uh, which does not let the layers dissipate more heat than they need and uh, as as the porous uh, structure will carry out the excess heat and also the uh, also will have certain thermally grown oxides which uh, which are uh, layered on it so that there will be no oxidation uh, upon the definite temperature so primary layer can can have polyurethane infused with silica resin uh, the like as a polymer nano composite with higher tensile strength and least thermal conductivity uh, since we are go uh, talking about the temperatures the materials that we choose are definitely supposed to have a least thermal conductivity as they should not induce any heat into it so so as to have no wearing and also the no internal damage so preferably we use uh, high velocity oxy, oxy uh, fluid uh, can be used for spray coating uh, and high vacuum sorry high vacuum uh, for spray coating and it is efficiently used for uh, mcr ally or uh, hf coatings where m is uh, nickel or cobalt nickel or cobalt and uh, hf is hafnium these are uh, like the premium uh, coatings that are being used in the market and uh, this could be a illustrative uh, picture of what we do and uh, an alloy substrate molybdenum layer or any or an aerogel layer or any uh, layer that could uh, suffice the external heat and the polymer nano composite as a top layer uh, when we consider nano thermal barrier coating like nano as in uh, the size uh, as we know in power minus 6 or more than or less than that and uh, a nano composite or a nano alloy sub substrate at the very beginning layer mcr ly as the bond coat zirconium oxide which is the thermally grown oxide can be used can be used and uh, 
a layer with a minimum thermal conductivity and considerably high tensile being a natural fiber can be used as a primer as we are talking about the natural fibers uh, with respect to this presentation we are totally focus on focusing on that aspect so natural fibers uh, predominantly have a uh, good uh, thermal properties as well as tensile properties as well as good elasticity uh, which you'll be knowing uh, further like as you grow up as your grades grow up so similarly coating can be done using hvof or vacuum plasma spraying for final stability and uh, primary layer can be again coated with polyurethane uh, which is a polymer uh, enriched composite or nano ceramic composite or rigidia stabilized zirconia whereas its melting point is 2715 degrees celsius thermal conductivity is 3 pi per meter kelvin elastic modulus is greater than 12 gpa which uh, impose uh, the higher uh, stability to that uh, this could be the illustrative picture uh, like how do we exactly place them in accordance with the tile uh, since since we talk about thermal protection system we definitely make them as tiles so tiles as in the, we put on the layers of different uh, fibers or the different uh, uh, materials that we have and we'll make a tile and that tile will be used uh, for the protection system in a space shuttle or a reentry vehicle or uh, is like for example you can take iss or uh, any uh, rocket system that you take so so as far as i can conclude with uh, the fact in the recent times as per the availability of the materials on demanded metals such as metal composites hybrid hybrid metal laminates are highly priced see we can see that uh, if we consider a metal and a natural fiber considerably we can say that metal is highly priced rather uh, but uh, you can also consider the fact that uh, the natural fibers are not uh, fibrously available we need you need to pick up the leaves and you need to go with the manufacturing process and later you'll be finding out the finding out with the uh, fibers but uh, when we compare with the original prices of the metals that are being available in the market natural fibers could be a bit of a low cost uh, and comprised uh, efficient things so natural fibers have a good impact on the manufacturing sector as and the idea of utilizing them comes from their availability price properties etc since the natural fibers are mostly found in the low populated rural as well as forest and hilly areas Uh, research on this provides employability as well as production of this will suppress the high cost and demand of the existing components since uh, uh like we d- we don't find uh, certain products like uh, like sisal or basalt or uh, uh, flax or like what whatever we choose from we don't find ex- uh, them exactly on any other urban plateaus or any other urban areas we usually find them in the in the rural uh, places or the jungle areas where uh, as as of now the employability and the other factors are uh, kind of low so if we choose these products over the traditional uh, metal laminates that we are using we can also give a, give a good amount of uh, occupation or the employability that could uh, suffice their uh, needs and this is also one of the main uh, reason that we have chosen this so they have a good upper hand on the synthetic fiber laminates as well uh, as we have seen uh, uh, the properties and the, the everything so this is all about our uh, presentation sir uh, thank you for this opportunity and uh, we are honored to have you sir uh, dr jayaram sir yes. uh, thank you thank you team uh, thank you pranay sutja and yochna so now we open for questions now so uh, yes definitely audience if you have any questions students we have any questions you can ask those who are watching in uh, youtube live you can also post your questions in the live chat uh, so we have one question from sanjana sanjana you yeah. can unmute yourself and ask your question yeah pranay so then uh, let sanjana will uh, come later uh, yes actually natural fibers are uh, um, um uh, how do you ensure the uh, properties are uh, like uh, uh, uniform properties sir actually uh, like we we are, we are choosing different properties as per the material analysis that are being posted in the research papers okay. and uh, further in further to that in addition to that uh, we have uh, also chosen few property few uh, materials for testing we are in the process we are uh, if if it gets succeeded 
then we'll know the exact amount of uh, the accuracy that we're talking about. So as long as uh, the natural fibers are used for other applications, uh, mm, it's fine. But uh, yes, yeah, because in uh, on a normal temperature, if you go at very high temperatures, because these are all uh, these fibers are always composed with uh, cellulose, semi-cellulose, and lignin. Yes, sir. yes, sir, definitely. So cellulose are decomposing around uh, 250 to 300 degrees centigrade and uh, hemicellulose are decomposing, uh, uh, yeah, it's around 300 to 320 degrees centigrade. Lignin is around 400 degrees centigrade, okay. Yes. So mostly it is composed. So the, the, these materials are composed. And uh, if you do this, some the, uh, you can get it this uh, thermal analysis, some thermogravimetry analysis, you can Easy. get this. Yes. Uh, uh, decomposition temperatures and uh, this thing. So you have to ensure that uh, uh, there is uh, proper insulation should be like coating. Insulated yes, coating should be done yes, so sir. that we can safeguard the material. We we, we have uh, considered few uh, polymers and uh, and resins with in okay. addition to the fiber structure. Hmm. Uh, and we are uh, mixing both uh, to ensure uh, like better adhesion and as well as the better uh, composite properties. Sir. So like it's still in the process. We are not yet confirmed with the exact materials, but uh, we are in the idea of uh, com like mixing with the other uh, composite structures. And as well, like as you all talk about the uh, like the basic uh, first layer would be an aluminum composite. So hmm. the other layers are as uh, set follows. So we are in plan of that, sir, but uh, we'll get the exact results while we perform the exact operations for, on the material. Yeah, do this uh, prepare by, it's, it's almost like a composite, board, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it does. It it's is. a composite. So, uh, yeah, composite, uh, these materials are used in uh, some uh, low temperature application composites. Low yes, temperature sir. means it is like normal temperature, may, it may not go more than like uh, yeah, 100 degrees centigrade or something like that. Okay, sometimes uh, in aerospace we can get some thermal shock also. Thermal shock yeah, means yeah, yeah. very high temperature uh, uh, variations, then thermal fatigue, all these things we have to be ensured. Yes, sir. So then, uh, so that is one point. And uh, another thing is like uh, you talk about some nanofibers, no? can you go to your presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm there are some doubts in that. Yes, sir. Nano composite or nano alloy, nano alloy substrate. So, yeah, it's, it's usual vacuum place. Plasma, plasma we thought of 7075, AL7075 as uh, the nano composite or uh, mm -hmm. AL5412. Okay, so the natria stabilized zirconia, it's a generally used to combo nanomaterials, yes, no? It's a yes, sir. Ceramic composite. Are you but sure this is the temperature? 2715 degrees centigrade of uh, melting point? Uh, it was mentioned in Google, sir. It was mentioned in Google. I took this directly from Google. What is the operating temperature? Uh, I'm not sure about that, sir. We are, we are always looking for the operating temperature. Melting temperature means it is uh, everything will get collapse. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. It's it's like uh, operating temperature is varied from uh, 350 degrees Celsius to 700 degrees Celsius. Okay, we have to be sure. So then, uh, yeah, it has to be within that limit. So operating yes, temperature sir. means before the recrystallization temperature of any material. Yes, yes, sir. 350 to 700 degrees Celsius. Yeah, so then, yeah, we have to, yeah, the we have to limit this temperature uh, like coating or something like that. Okay. Yes, sir. So normally we have to mention only the operating temperature. Melting temperature could be like a, it's a physical the value. So yeah. Yes, sir. We don't. <laughs> yeah. We we should not uh, worry about all these things. Okay. Okay, sir. Elastic modulus is uh, twelve GPA. Are you sure that? Yes, sir. Hmm. Yeah, thermal conductivity is reasonable because it's a ceramic material, so it it's, has, it's it's reasonable. Yeah, it's it, it's always like that. Go to next one. Next slide. No, no. Can you go in the presentation mode? Next one. 
Next. Next. No, previous one. You mentioned 1200 degrees centigrade. Thermal barrier coating and the thermal. Not stabilized. Yeah, go to presentation mode, uh, Pramay. Yeah, yes. Yes, sir. It's uh, 150 to 200 microns, the thermal barrier coating material, and another is like 150 micron of like thermally grown oxide and the uh, yeah, bond coat, diffusion zone, and super alloy. Uh, what is it actually? So it's a, it's a uh, thermal riser, like uh, when, when the temperature is uh, exceeding about uh, 300 degrees Celsius, uh, like it is being impacted on the top surface and the thermal barrier coating is spray deposited using zirconium oxide layer. And mm. uh, we have uh, zirconium oxide as a thermal grown oxide and uh, MCRLY is, uh, is uh, being bond coated with uh, like almost uh, equivalent to 900 degrees Celsius. In coronal is the substrate, super alloy substrate. That, that, that's a tile, sir. That's the tile that, that is being used with respect to the uh, lens and everything, like 150 to 200 micrometer uh, ranges for the top layer, which is deposited mm -hmm. by Z ZRO2 layer and the other layers. So this material you are planning to buy or uh, you will fabricate? So this this is just the illustrative uh, picture. So like if, if we are to make a, a tile, okay. th this could, these... Uh, order could be our uh, precised layers like okay. we can place a super alloy at the, at the bottom and the diffusion layer and the bot bond coat mm -hmm. and the thermally grown offset and the thermal barrier coating or that that can be uh, substituted by a uh, polyurethane mixture a polymer amylase composite mm -hmm. it, it is only a creative visualization so that's what okay fine yes sir but you have to still uh, ensure that what is the diffusion zone and the, how it will. Uh... Usually when the temperature rises above then uh, like uh, hot corrosion uh, stage one, like 750 degrees Celsius to 800 degrees Celsius, the, mm -hmm. uh, the gases inside, uh, like the gases which are being deposited from the external layers, like, like the mm -hmm. surroundings will start to diffuse uh, uh, with, with the layers that are reacting. Like, Although the uh, reacting layers are uh, slightly close enough, so the reaction starts while uh, the temperature increases. So to stop that rea uh, reaction and to stop that diffusion, we are using mm -hmm. this uh, diffusion zone. Sir. Also, like uh, when the temperature rises, uh, the internal uh, what what like the internal oxidation of the components also increases, like hot corrosion uh, or the hot ox oxidation. So to suppress that or to like to not let that happen, these coatings are being used. Uh, we use a thermally grown oxide so that the internal oxidation won't rise and uh, uh, de deplete the extent uh, uh, deplete or bear the external components. Okay. Since corrosion is also a main factor uh, while we reach up about these altitudes and uh, temperatures. Okay. Okay, fine, uh, yes, Pranay and uh, Ritija. And, uh, yes, sir. So, well done, Pranay, Ritija. And uh, we have some questions from uh, uh, students. So, Sanjana, you can ask your doubt now. So, can you hear me, sir? Yes. So, my question is, uh, since all of you like told those, uh, you know, these fibers are like good conductors of heat. So, when they've been exposed to, you know, like some sort of heat or let's say fire, so when that damage the parts, like let's say it is being like, you know, used on a rocket. So when they catch fire and all, won't that damage the entire object? Oh, basically, Usually. we don't directly use the fibers on the uh, rockets or like that. Uh, we use that in the making of the tile, the basic uh, skin of the aircraft or uh, any space vehicles. So uh, with the fiber, we add other or uh, resin mattress, we use other uh, polymers also to protect it. And so it like we have a base metal also. We have aluminum metal as aluminum sheets as metals. First, it's a metal layer, then fiber layer, 
then we have composite trace and mixtures. So no, it won't, it won't, I mean, directly doesn't get exposed to fire. Well, uh, the fire might catch, uh, but we'll, we will have to ensure uh, the fibers won't exhibit those properties. And uh, to suppress them, we need to use certain uh, layers. Uh, that, that's how the process goes. So there's because a possibility, we, but the possibility is less. Should, yeah, the possibility. Yeah, yeah sometimes. Uh, less. Yeah, it is. Uh, sometimes we have to use some kind of self healing arrangements also. It's uh, what was happening this uh, Kalpana Chawla's accident, you know. So this uh, yes, thermal coating layer uh, supposed to be, uh, it is uh, the, that layer has to uh, come out. Okay, so, so that the inner layer material could be safeguarded, but uh, it does not happen that time. So there is some uh, leakage and there is some breakage in the tile so that it's broken and that is, uh, it is uh, completely, yeah, making damages inside the uh, layer and uh, it creates problem. Because uh, yeah. whenever we are dealing with uh, high, uh, high speed uh, aerodynamics, uh, it's a very, uh, it's a, uh, it's extremely very high temperatures. It's like 300, Sorry, three, two, 2,500 to 3,000 degrees centigrade. So no material in the earth or anywhere it is uh, it's turned that much uh, temperature. Somehow we have to uh, insulate that material, some coating, or else uh, let's uh, layer by layer it will worn out. Okay, because re-entry and uh, yeah, or uh, space vehicles or uh, missiles. So it's operating time is very very small. It's, it's in terms of minutes. So that uh, the tiles materials can uh, worn out. It's not an issue. Okay, so okay, I have another question. Can I? Yeah. Uh, so to talk about these fibers, like in one such slide, you you guys told that it's been like predominantly found in Africa. Like, what about the other fibers? Are these like found in India, or these need to be like exported? So if it is yes. being exported, like, will it cost a lot? Like, are they like expensive? Like, like it wasn't exactly told like the, these are only man, uh, like found in Africa. It's like the major parts are found in Africa. They are also found in India and uh, the other southern Asian parts. But uh, I, I'm not sure there would be any implications with respect to the costing and uh, the trading aspect because also like India is a fertile and uh, like uh, what do you say? India is a highly vegetated country. So we will definitely find all of the components in India. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sanjay, you have questions? Yes, uh, how do they make these fibers? These are mainly made in uh, machine things. Um, it's, it's actually, uh, there will be a manufacturing process for every fiber to be made. See, certainly it's not like uh, they'll be found directly. We'll take the leaves, uh, we'll add some solutions to it, we'll, have, we'll add some uh, required materials to uh, not let them lose their properties and in the final stage uh, they are made dry and uh, they'll be like uh, you know like uh, you can also pick fibers from uh, the coconut leaves and everything see yeah. it is the, when, when the coconut tree when the coconut leaf is dried you can directly uh, scrap out the fibers layer fibrous layer out of it, it it's like every leaf has its own way to wear out the fi fibrous structure from it so every uh, every fiber has its own uh, manufacturing process. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So any other any other questions? Harijit, Vignesh, uh, Shruti, Nish, Vishnu, Mat Matesh. No doubt. All all the students are like uh, they are like. Uh, budding entrepreneurs so they have their own company name they have their own uh, team of CEOs, CTOs yeah so you can ask your questions our team or you can put it in chat box because this is one of the advanced uh, technologies used in uh, uh, missiles uh, satellites re-entry vehicles and all this okay so that so Ajayaraman sir, so any other comments on uh, presentations from uh, the uh, Pranay Yachana Spirtaja team? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
permits okay jagdish so so uh, i think we uh, have yeah they are areas which uh, we told them uh, uh, they are currently working on certain things uh, which is yeah, some yeah. that i think yeah, we can give the our comments so let them uh, explore uh, yes. the direction so that uh, so the because, current uh, research, some, uh, sometimes uh, yeah theoretically it could be possible but practically it may not be yes but that's fine so on so uh, so we'll have a separate uh, discussion on this the current yeah, works yeah. they are doing and they are doing some practical works as well so yeah, that, yeah. Uh, we can uh, discuss it after the live thank you thank you team thank you pranay yochana hatja that's a nice presentation is like uh, the children are i think uh, watching the first time uh, with a guest uh, interacting with uh, the senior level presenters so guys you can give their give your feedbacks so how you felt about uh, the senior level presentation so we we all used to our uh, usual uh, template so arjit you can uh, yeah tell how you felt it you can share your feedbacks and also in the youtube live as well you can share your feedbacks and uh, yeah so this is available there so whenever you want to do some uh, reading or you want to go through it it will be there always okay thank you so much so that is uh, chapter number 32 future scientists meet so do support do share this word so uh, we are bringing out all the talents all the research works being done by students college students who are like having this raging passion to do something for the nation or the world so that uh, we make sure it happens we take them in right direction as well thank you so much thank you vishnu thank you uh, vibhav thank you uh, pranay yochana priya team uh, thank you jaraman sir thank uh, you thank you sir uh, this is a great thank opportunity you, for us and uh, it's an honor to present in front of you sir Thank you, fine, yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Vishnu, so thank you, all guys. Have your discussion now. <laughs> okay. Shoot your question to Vishnu. <laughs> yes, so, uh, so I am going to end the live now, so we can shoot the questions after this. Uh, thank you so much, audience. So, who are watching this, kindly share this word. Uh, make uh, so make it to reach uh, as many people uh, as possible. so we are going to come up with lot more of this with senior uh, set of students uh, from college level presentations that's going to be called, that's called the futurist meet so that we have more than uh, 80 to 90 students in the crew uh, who will be presenting every week thank you so much oh, see you all next week with a new set of topic